after a long wait, I finally get the chance to work on this video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my very first video on YouTube ever. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Fan Fiction Library. Konnichiwa, Minasan, and welcome! I am your host, KKD Silver, and I'd like to welcome you all to the Fanfic Library for the first time ever. Now, you may be wondering to yourselves, what the heck is the Fanfic Library, and who the heck are you? Well, to answer the second question, I'm an author on fanfiction.net who creates various crossover fanfictions along with a bunch of friends on there. As for what the Fanfic Library is, it's this series of YouTube videos that I'm going to be posting every once in a while between my own fanfiction updates. And here, I'm going to be reviewing fanfictions themselves. And you see, hey, hey, come back. Uh -huh. You're trying to run away. Do you think fanfictions are all bad? Oh, no, 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 no. You got no idea. There, let me explain. There are good fanfics and there are bad fanfics. Most people have just bashed on fan fictions because they have ru and they quote ruined a lot of popular franchises and gave some crazy ideas. But trust me, you don't know a good fanfic unless you actually give it a shot. So, what I'm going to be doing is giving you various sh fanfics to check out and let you know whether they're good or bad. And so today, I'm going to be it was my very first review ever. So thanks to Toa Koi, the author of that fanfiction, and his DeviantArt community, this is my little bionicle. Destiny is magic. Now from the title, you may imagine that this little fanfiction is somehow related to Bionicle in a sense. For those of you who don't know, Bionicle is a little toy line created by Lego in the early 2000s. It's one of my childhood favorites growing up, I must admit. And I'm sure a bunch of you out there can agree as well. Mock pages, anybody? But I digress. This series is going to view this particular fanfic. Now, how exactly am I going to set this up? Well, I'm going to give you a little backstory about when this was posted, as well as explain a little bit about the plot. Not too much, not too much, because I want you all to read them yourselves and I'll tell you where you can find these various fanfics. So, let's get started. We are going to go for a little background. Originally posted to JFPR on DeviantArt on February 29th, 2012, Leap Day, by the way, this story was originally uploaded to, and this story was uploaded to fanfiction.net on September 12th of the exact same year. Yeah. This story's only been two years old. Hard to believe. But in any case, this is a very good story. It's obviously a Bionicle a Bo and My Little Pony crossover, which is written in English, and this isn't exactly for the younger viewers. Well, this is rated T, so there may be some violence and such in there, so if you got little kids that can't stand that stuff, I recommend you... Keep them out of this one for a little bit. But this is a nice little action mystery genre style story. The first chapter, I mean the first installment of this, being 15 chapters with a total of about 56,000 words. Don't worry, it's a very good one. I mean a very good story. It managed to gather up 14 reviews, 17 faves, and 15 follows on fan fiction alone. Who knows how many more have been following the story on DeviantArt when it was originally posted. And, heck, like I said, the guy even got a DeviantArt group to help out with this thing. Yeah, it's that popular. I'm not joking. Go ahead and check it out. Still here? Okay, I guess I might as well explain a little bit more. How exactly is this good? Well, some of you may be wondering about how some fanfiction authors may tend to make some characters go out of character. Well, how well does Toa Koi do it? Well, let's take a look at that and see how that fares. Now, in terms of characters in this story, he actually manages to get a bit of a good balance in here a little bit, I think. 
He focuses on Takua from the Bionicle universe. No, not that Takua. Um, wait. Well, I guess it kind of is the same Takua. But it, 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 we're talking about a pony version of that. Eh, close enough, I guess. But at the same time, we're also focusing on the main six a little bit and diving into a little bit more of a backstory involving Princess Luna, as well as what the heck happened after Nightmare Moon. Yeah, this involves Luna and Nightmare Moon. For all you bronies out there, I can probably hear you cheering already. Yeah, it took a little bit to start filming in the vid. But in any case, I gotta tell you that this is a nice twist to the story. It really balances things out between both the Bionicle side of things and the MLP side of things. And since we're talking about characters, let's get a little bit into the setting and where the heck this all takes place. Now, in terms of where the story takes place, it's taking place within the MLP universe. So how the heck do the Bionicle characters get involved? Well, it's not from transferring from different worlds. No, it's from Toa Koi cleverly blending the two worlds together. That's right, folks. The world of Bionicle takes place in this MLP universe. It is a very nice twist on things, too. The island of Modern Nui, cleverly punned, is now called Main Nui. It could use a bit of work, I guess, but it's appropriate for MLP. What do you expect? And, like I said, this takes in the plot of the first Bionicle storyline from 2001. Specifically, Tokoi is kind of explaining a little bit of what Taku has to go through before the Toa actually arrive. For those of you who are wondering, we'll get to them in a little bit, uh, for later installment, actually. At the same time, we got the MLP universe, which was... Admittedly, I wasn't sure where the heck this story took place in terms of the MLP story. Because, again, this was published in 2012. A lot of stuff has happened since then. And I had no idea which season this kind of took place in. Whether it was somewhere between then season 2, season 3, or even entering season 4 for all I know. In any case... It still manages to get some things through, well, with the Bionicle storyline bleeding into the MLP universe, aspects of them being witnessed by our main six and the MLP characters. Not to mention, we also managed to get to see some other characters much earlier than the original storyline. And we also get to see the return of King Sombra. I'm not going to spoil that much else, but in any case... This is a very well-constructed story. I'd also like to point out some of the other characters that do end up making some major appearances here. I will, and I have to say, you know, there are some characters from later on in the Bionicle line that pop up. I'm not going to say much else, but there have been a couple of OC characters that have made quite the significant role in this storyline. There's this pony named... Technia, an OC of Blaziken King, who is quite interesting, I guess, and apparently got popular enough to get her own side story. And we also get to see a character named Goldrax, who was created by uh, Bio AJ1998, I think you say it that way. If I pronounced it wrong, I'm sorry. I'm going to place it down here. Yeah. In any case, those are some of the characters that have appeared, OC and Official. There's going to be a whole lot more as well, but I will give you a little bit more later on. So, what the heck do I think about it overall? Well, let's get a look at some pros and cons, and you can get an idea. The Mythos Fusion. This story has two sets of mythos that can essentially clash together, especially when the worlds have two completely different types of locals, one side being the organic ponies, and the other being the mostly robotic Mentoran and Toa. And yet, Toa Koi managed to fuse both of these realities perfectly, finding a good balance between who and what should be made into a pony for this reality. 
and which should be closer to the source material, even. The Brotherhood of Makuta. Okay, I gotta get this off my chest. I understand, Tokoi, I understand if you intended to bring in more villains to make it more of a challenge for our heroes. However, the way, I mean, if you're watching this, Tokoi, I have to confess, the way you portrayed the members of the Brotherhood made it feel like something was a little bit off. I don't know what it was exactly. Maybe it was because these guys were introduced later in the lifetime of the Bionicle story. But personally, I just don't feel that the Makuta should be arguing this much so early in the timeline of this story. I'm sorry, but that's just how I feel about it. Nightmare Moon. Now, I'm not going to explain too much about this, but I... Oh, I'm... Okay. Spoiler alert. This will involve a little plot explaining, so if you don't want to listen, you're going to have to cut out. Otherwise, feel free to get a little bit of a hint at what the heck is happening in the story. What happens with Nightmare Moon? Now, officially, Nightmare Moon is a corrupted version of Princess Luna. And yet, she was a popular character along with Luna, who managed to make a huge impact on the story of MLP FIM. And Toa Koi pulled off the return of Nightmare Moon herself brilliantly. Just brilliantly. He managed to take advantage of the Bionicle mythos and the existence of the Makuta, as, and put a perfect spin on Nightmare Moon's origins, and manages to turn her from the terrifying pony of nightmares, as that was Nightmare Moon, the one that would make most ponies wet themselves at night, into a misunderstood Billy known as Artemis, who helps further Princess Luna's character. And I love to see such brilliant character development. Tokoi, you're getting major props for that one. I'd like to see more of Artemis in the future, and if you manage to make her a more prominent character, I'm going to get you major props in future reviews. The lack of setting clarification. Now, you see, this is a big one for me personally. Now, Tokoi just thrusts us into the world, not giving us the slightest idea of where we are at in the MLP storyline, as I've stated before. Admittedly, he starts us off with the Bionicle cast instead, so it keeps them true to character. But when we see, when we first see Twilight, I found it unclear as to whether or not the story took place before or after she earned her princess title and became an alicorn. It barely even mentioned this until around the third act, or the last third, of the entire story. Tolkoi, I'm sorry, but you need to further explain about these. Seriously? You got some splaining to do! Now the foreshadowing. This may be a little bit uh, much, but... This is brilliant for a story that has planned sequels. You're, if you want to keep fans interested, you got to manage to be able to get their interest in, even with the tiniest clues to where the heck is, and what the heck is going to happen later in the story. Now, for Bionicle and MLP fans, the clues in this story ha are a bit obvious at times. But... For a first time read, I feel as if the hints given throughout the story, they were very cool indeed. Sure, I could tell the possibilities of what could happen with those hints, but I feel if someone came across this story and knew nothing of either Bionicle or MLP, those foreshadowed moments would in fact be epic. I truly like that about that Tolkoi. The Rakshi. Now, don't get me wrong. The Rakshi were cool and menacing. But 
So this is more of a personal nitpick than anything else. But I am curious. Why did you, Tokoi, choose to use the appearance of these beasts as when they appeared in the Mask of Light movie? I do like how you acknowledged the multiple different types of Rakshi, not just those released in sets, but all the other kinds as well. But what I don't get is this. Why in the Tartarus would you use these things from the movie? They're more or less worms pilot and worm pilot and robots, which is technically what the Rakshi are and were, but the sets and original commercials depicted them as reptilian monsters that could that could become nifty hovercrafts and all have the powers that could easily be depicted by a reptilian monster. Not robot suit piloted by the karate worms on instinct. Ah, oh, jeez. I'm sorry. But, seriously, if you plan on rewriting this, you'll have to go with more reptilian appearance in order to make it seem more threatening than the simple robots piloted by worms. Now, this is a neutral point. The OCs. Now, before any of you start saying I should hate on characters that are original to any plot, I can't say that. I made a few for my own stories, after all. But I have mixed opinions on these two shown here, as in Technia and Goldrax, seeing as they were introduced pretty late in the storyline. I mean, we literally don't see who these guys are until the last two-fifths of the entire story. It's nice that they're... And it's, it's nice for there to be someone for us to relate to when we prepare for the creation of of the Dark Toa, or, uh, spoiler alert, Toa Eclipse, as well as have a potential spy for our heroes in the sequel to this first installment, which, I gotta admit, Goldrax is excellent for. But while it's okay for Technia to be there in the story, her backstory feels like it kind of fell on deaf ears, in my opinion, and the only reason she's in this is so we can have an excuse for a sentient Vaki, which were security bots with little to no intelligence apart from their original programming, in the form of Blue. Not to mention, Technia and Blue managed to get their own side story, which I personally still don't get. It's regardless. That's kind of what I got to say about this story. Final analysis? I give this story a B plus. It's a fun little romp of a crossover, and I feel it's a nice dark twist for MLP. Not too dark, but just right. Plus, it's a cool way to bring Bionicle back into the forefront of things. This story was very enjoyable. You would think it'd be impossible for something like Bionicle to work in a crossover, and it would you think it would be it wouldn't work with anything still popular today like MLP. But you'd be wrong. And this is a nice little prologue to a story that is going to going on to this day. There's some nitpicks I personally feel could have been improved, but it's still a thing. The brony community is constantly growing, and even if they aren't bronies, there are still fans of MLP coming all the time, and much to the surprise of some people, even after nearly five years of being out of circulation, Bionicle is still popular to this day. And hey, I'm a recent brony convert who has a childhood in Bionicle, which gives this a greater reason to enjoy this. And even today, there's still people out there. This story even gained a big following in less than two years. To the point that it got its own wiki page on the MLP fan wiki, its own fan art, and even its own DeviantArt group after its original release on DeviantArt. Yeah, I said this often, but I'm serious on that. If you're a fan of Bionicle or MLP looking for new twists, this story is a must read. Otherwise, if you're still br just browsing, this is still a nice read if you can ignore some of the minor issues here and there. Well, and that's enough for this episode, Mina-san. Till next time, I am Cake80Silver, and I want you to read more fanfics.
If you have any suggestions of what the heck I should read, please, I'd like to hear. Place your suggestions in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to give the fan fictions a read, as well as see if they're video review worthy. So, until next time, viewers, I am KK Silver, and I'll be seeing you next time for the fanfic library. Johnny. Now, where did I put that thing? It, whoop. <laughs> stupid, stupid headphones. Hey guys, it's KKD Silver here. Now, as you may notice, my set's a little bit different. I'm at my grandma's house right now, and I'm kind of working on some stuff at the same time. Now, the reason why the footage, footage in the video looks so old is because, well, I was a little lazy, unfortunately. I apologize for not getting the video out sooner, but I promise you I'll do my best to get more of these videos out in the future. So, regardless. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you liked it, you can click that red button down below or this little box right here to subscribe to my channel, with my uh, main channel here, KKD Silver 24. Or you could click on one of these links here. Here you could be able to check out my works on fan fiction itself, some other fan fictions I came up with, as well as some artwork that I may or may not have come up with myself. Do you want to follow me more? Well, you can click up here on one of these icons to follow me on Facebook or Twitter. I don't have anything like Instagram or anything, and don't expect me to do that anytime soon. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have any more suggestions for any kind of fan fiction you want me to review, please tell me in the comment section below. Until next time, this is KKD Silver signing off, and don't forget to fave, like, comment, and subscribe. Johnny.